Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Healing Conversations. I'm Sana, and in this episode, we're going to get into inner child work. And the reason why I really want to share a lot about inner child work today, I'm going to see how much I'm able to share, because of course, it's a very big topic, but because it has really transformed my life. And I'm now also going to explain how it did that. So inner child work really changes your relationship that you have to yourself. And it can change that relationship so drastically that it basically changes every relationship in your life. And what I also realized through inner child work and more deeper inner work that our relationship to ourself basically influences everything because everything in our life is connected to and based on relationships. And um, when we reconnect with our inner child and create a healthy and safe relationship, we are better, we're more able to also create healthy relationships in our life. And no matter it's a friendship or a partnership, um, or it's a relationship to our career or work or whatever it is that um, through this deep inner work of reconnecting with your inner child, um, you can really change that. And in this episode, um, I'm also going to explain how we are able to do that. So first of all, what's important is, of course, to then have a deeper understanding of what is the inner child. And I'm going to kind of explain this from two different angles. So like I also explained to you in my episode, I don't know if you already listened to it in with about shadow work, is that with everything, we kind of have a light and a shadow aspect. And the same is true with inner child work. So let's first get into the light aspect, which is that no matter how old we become, no matter how old we grow, we always have access and we always access to the essence of who we are, our inner child, our inner set essence with that beholds our authentic truth, what we really like, love and enjoy doing, what gives us energy and what sparks our curiosity and what kind of beholds our innocence and our sense of play and of being able to live in a moment um, to be deeply connected to your own nature and to nature itself. And um, yeah, so that's, we can all access that through our inner child and also our creativity and so much more um, because our inner child kind of is a doorway to that deep connection with ourselves and our authentic truth and who we really are uh, behind all the mask and behind all of that. And that, that aspect of yourself, that inner child stays alive no matter how old you become. And when we reconnect with that, we can also enjoy life more. We can be more happy, live more in the moment and to do things we enjoy, not only for producing or making money or whatever it is, but that there's way more to life um, than just doing things for a certain result which is more the adult mindset and the more shadow aspect so how kind of inner child work kind of becomes a part of shadow work is when we become aware and meet and integrate aspects of ourselves that are like inner children that we suppressed into the unconscious so what happens when we experience trauma as a child and to clarify, trauma doesn't always have to be something really dramatic or something really big. It can be really small. And no matter what upbringing we have or how amazing parents we have, um, we all have traumatic experiences as a child. And it really shape and influence us also later in life. And if you really want to change those patterns, um, it can really help to go to the root of it, which is usually in childhood. And that's always a way more effective 
way of dealing with these issues, especially when it comes to relationships or certain patterns in our life seem to repeat over and over again, very often it originates in childhood from certain things that happens. And we can see this, especially if relationships that, um, especially a relationship with our parents or our caregivers, um, they deeply influence our relationships later in life. And through healing those wounds that occurred in childhood, and reconnecting with those aspects of herself and making them aware of that things have changed in our life, it's no longer the same. We can really also change our relationships. Um, and what I do wanna say, and I think this is very important because I've worked a lot with clients and um, also my own personal experience that whenever there's something happening in our life that and we becoming aware that, for example, it's coming from childhood, that we always have to know the exact situation or relive the trauma or be able aware of every little detail in order to resolve something, but that couldn't be further from the truth. And that's why I now wanna get into that the most important way of connecting to your inner child is through feeling, it's through emotions. And through our feelings and our emotions, we can reconnect with those aspects of ourselves that we suppressed uh, because um, our emotions can guide um, us back to them. And it doesn't always mean reliving certain childhood memories. It's not always necessary. And um, if, that, if you feel that's something you're not ready for, it's definitely ne not necessary. And there are many different ways you can do it. Um, but is what is most important and is essential in my opinion is that you allow yourself to feel those emotions and to stay with those emotions and um, to no longer turn your back, run away or distract yourself from it, but to really be able to be with it. And if it's needed also with another person being with you or guiding you through that process, but it's essential to no longer run away because um, the suppressing of those emotions or denying of those emotions is not working clearly. Um, and the antidote to that is to actually learning to be present with those emotions. And we can do this throughout our entire day. Uh, so it doesn't only have to be in a session or when we do a process or a certain practice, but that we learn to deeply connect to their emotions and especially what emotions you find more difficult, no matter what it is. For some of you, you may struggle more with anxiety and others more with anger or with shame, no matter what it is. But when you feel those emotions coming up and bottling up to learn to be present with them, and by just being aware of it and not necessarily having to change the way we feel, because that's what happened a lot in childhood and with most upbringings is that we have to feel a certain way than we do. And we have to suppress the way we really feel. And the opposite of that is learning to express the way we really feel. And we can start doing that with ourselves to be really honest with yourself of how you're really feeling and not having it to need it to be different. And that the way you interact with your emotions that you interact it in a way of, you can even visualize it for yourself if you like to in those moments, but like your emotions are kind of a little child within you, a younger aspect of yourself that's calling for your intention. It just needs your intention. It needs your presence. And that when you give those emotions and those aspects of yourself the presence, the awareness that it needs, it will naturally start to problem solve itself. So how that happens is that, for example, when we're feeling really anxious, right? And we're feeling really anxious and we are unsure why this anxiety is coming up all the time. And instead of trying to numb ourselves or distract ourselves from it or say, no, I, there's no reason to feel scared. If you would do the opposite and say, okay, I'm scared. I'm just going to take a moment to pause and just to be with this. And no matter where you are, usually we do have a moment where we can just have our space for ourselves and to just breathe into these emotions and be with them and say to ourselves, you know, it's okay to be scared. There's nothing wrong with being scared and to validate an emotion first. 
And then we can, if you want to, but you don't even have to just being with emotions sometimes is all we need. But if you like to take it one step further, you can even become aware and ask yourself, why am I feeling scared? So why is this emotions there? What is it here to tell me? What do you want to tell me? You can even do it in like an inner dialogue way with the child within you that's really scared. And then you can kind of start a conversation and then to also find out what that aspect of yourself, what does emotions, that inner child within you, what does it need? And even this anxiety, so what does it need to feel more safe? And to become aware, what is it really afraid of? And sometimes you find out, okay, it's I'm afraid of something that happened in my childhood and it's not going to happen again. So then you can just make that child aspect of you aware of the, of the here and now, and that you're now an adult and that you, you're able to do way more and you have a lot more power in a sense and you're able to, to meet those needs directly instead of through someone else which what we usually have in childhood. And that when you need help, you're able to actually reach out to someone or when you need support. Um, and that you can actually create circumstances in your life so you feel more safe and so your emotional needs are met. Um, so you feel more secure and safe being who you are and you can create that emotional safety for yourself. And sometimes it can also be that we're just really angry. And then it's about allowing yourself to express that anger. And you can do that through movement or also explained in my emotional healing episode, you can do that through writing. And sometimes what we need and these inner children within us have certain emotions. All that's sometimes needed is that we're able to express it. And that is the healing experience that we need. And what I also wanna share with you that was really helpful for me as well is to connect to my inner child through writing. And that by learning um, to kind of communicate to my inner child in a different way, um, I was also able to write a letter, for example. And in this letter, um, sometimes you can apologize to your inner child that you weren't aware of it and that you're sorry that you didn't listen to the way you felt and um, or you can just express how much you love and care about the child within you or to give it an inspirational message it might need to hear and what you can do this through writing but you can also through this to a more meditative process and to just take some time where you can just peacefully and like relax and that you just close your eyes and take a moment to just first become really present with yourself through your breathing and you can even put some background music if that makes you feel more comfortable and more safe and and then you can just even invite your inner child to reveal itself to you and sometimes it reveals itself like you see it through vision but Sometimes it's also, like I mentioned before, it's more the feeling state and the emotion. And then you can, again, start a process of becoming aware of what it feels or what it wants to show you. And what's also a more fun way to connect with your inner child is to, uh, first of all, like I said, to leave it a message. And what I always love to do, and I think I will create a meditation on this soon as well, is uh, the message in a bottle. So that you visualize your inner child meeting it on the beach and first becoming aware of what your inner child is doing. Is it playing? Is it happy? Is it sad? And then meeting those emotional needs. And then leaving your child also with a message in a bottle. So a message that it can always come back to. And it doesn't have to be long, it can also be something really short. and that you let your inner child know that it's loved um, exactly for the way she or she is. And she doesn't need to change herself um, for anyone in order to be loved. She doesn't have to achieve anything in order to be loved, but that she's worthy of love just the way you are or any other message that you want to share. And so we can do it through meditation and also a very fun way of connecting to your inner child is um, 
is also doing it through play. And so then it's about becoming aware. You can even journal about this to go into it more deeply, but we'll reflect back on it. Um, like, what did you love doing as a child? What did you really enjoy? And then start doing those things again. And for me, it was painting. I always loved painting and drawing as a child and I stopped doing that when I grew older for some reason. And when I reconnected with it, I just really allowed myself to play and also to paint without a need for a specific result or it has to be really pretty or beautiful, but just for the fun of it. And it would kind of create like once in a while just a play date. So where I could just have fun and play with some paint or do some other stuff to cut things up and make fun collages or um, all kinds of things. Also with movement, instead of moving, creating like a movement practice or workout very strictly of like, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to put on some music and I just move however my body wants to move in like a childlike way of like playing. And another fun thing I love to do is rewatch my favorite childhood movies. And to, especially, I love Disney and I love Disney as a child. So I would just, when I feel like I want to reconnect um, with my inner child, and I would just create a fun, safe, cozy evening with like lots of blankets, like a hot chocolate, and I would just watch a Disney movie. So there's so many ways um, we can connect to our inner child and it's best to always feel into it, connect with your emotions in the, in the moment. What is it that I really want and need right now? And sometimes it's to really go more into the depth, like into the shadow and be with those uncomfortable feelings and to receive support when you need to in that. And sometimes it's about really allowing yourself to awaken that playfulness, that fun and that creativity and to really feel into your body, you know, what do I want to need right now? And what you will notice that reconnecting with your inner child is like an ongoing process. And the more you do it, the more effortless and the more natural it becomes. And then in some ways we don't even have to kind of focus on doing something, but it, it also starts to naturally happen. And we will reconnect with those natural impulses of curiosity, of inspiration, or, or just the way we want to express in a certain moment. And it is a process, but it, for me, it has been a really beautiful life transformative process. So I hope you have some ideas from this episode, what you can do to reconnect with your inner child if you're either new to it or it's a process you've been on for a longer period of time. There's always more ways we can do it by either going a little bit more deeper or making it maybe even a little bit more playful again depending on what you need and so yeah just take from this episode what resonates most with you because i think that's essential and if you have any questions about it about inner child work or some of the things i've said or mentioned uh, feel free to just let me know i would love to answer your question and i also for those of you who feel like you do need more support in that process of reconnecting with your inner child changing your relationships or you may be going to a big life transition and you want support in that process um, I do want to let you know that um, I also have two new spots opening up for my private mentorship program in the new year and to just explain a little bit about it um, it's a three to six month process where first year for three months we will have a weekly session um, and it's completely designed to you and to your wants and to your needs and we'll mainly go deep into shadow work inner child work working with archetypes um, also creating a healthy mind body and heart so basically um, how you can create really what you want and need to create in your life at this moment in time and yeah so the first three months you have a weekly session and then afterwards three months a monthly session so you have a big process that allows you a safe space to go through this big transition that you might be going through 
and that you're able to process and find solution for things that are currently holding you back in life or things that are weighing you down. And yeah, so I created this private mentorship program, especially for people who feel like they're going through a big transition and needing a lot of support in that. Um, so yeah, so if you just want to know more about it, you can just send me a message for more info. And you can also go to sanahart.com uh, to apply for the program. And first we will always have um, a call together for you to really feel into it if it's really the right thing for you. Um, because it's essential that you feel safe with me and it, it feels like a 100% yes. So if you're interested, just let me know and I would love to have a call with you. And if not, that's okay too. Just really tune into what you need at this time. And there will be more episodes coming up and I also feel really inspired to um, create an inner child meditation soon. So stay tuned for that. And I just wanna wish you a wonderful week and thank you for listening.